That is a rigged economy. We are going to change that. We are going to create an economy that works for all of us, not just the 1%. We are going to change an economy in which we have today, shamefully, the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth at the same time as we are seeing a proliferation of billionaires. That is not what this country is supposed to be about. And not only are we going to deal with a corrupt campaign finance system and with a rigged economy, we are going to deal with a broken criminal justice system. What this campaign is about is urging the American people to think outside of the box, to look at the status quo, not as it has to be, but in ways that we can change it. The, re the reality that we are experiencing today is not the reality that we have to have. The options, the policy options that the corporate media give us are not the only options that we have. So when we think about the status quo, ask yourselves, how does it happen that in this country, the wealthiest country in the history of the world, we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. Think about it. Think about it. China is a communist authoritarian country. They don't tolerate dissent all that much. And yet we have more people in jail than China, which is four times our size. So here's what I think together we have got to do. We have got to recognize that youth unemployment in this country is off the charts, that for white kids who graduated high school, real unemployment, 33 percent, Latino kids, 36 percent, African American kids, 51 percent. So what we are going to do is invest in jobs and education, not jails and incarceration. Forty, forty years ago, we once had the best educated population in the world. We can be that people again. We don't have to have kids hanging out on street corners. They can be in school and in decent paying jobs. And when we talk about a broken criminal justice system, you and I and everyone else in this country are tired of seeing videos of unarmed people, often African Americans, shot by the police. I am a former mayor. I have worked with police departments in my own state of Vermont, and I've worked with police all over this country. 
The vast majority of police officers are honest, hardworking, and they have a really hard job. But, like any other public official, when a police officer breaks the law, that officer must be held accountable. We have got to demilitarize our police departments. We have got to make local police departments reflect the diversity of the communities that they serve. We have got to take a hard look at the failed war on drugs. There are millions of Americans over the last 30 years who have received police records for possession of marijuana. Right now, the Federal Controlled Substance Act has marijuana as a Schedule I drug, alongside of heroin. Every person here knows that heroin is a killer drug. And while people may debate the pluses and minuses of marijuana, it ain't heroin, that's for sure. And that is why I have introduced legislation to take marijuana out of the Federal Controlled Substance Act. States, as you know, have the right to legalize marijuana. Four states have done that. But in my view, possession of marijuana should not be a federal crime. And when we talk about drugs, let me simply say that in my state of Vermont, neighboring New Hampshire, and states all over this country, we have a major crisis in drug addiction, in heroin addiction, in opiate addiction. People die every day from overdoses. In my view, we need to treat drug addiction as a health issue, not a criminal issue. And what that means, and what that means, and again, this is thinking big and outside of the box. It means that we need a revolution in mental health treatment in this country. People should be able to get the treatment they need when they need it, not six months from now. This campaign is doing well because we are listening to the people of this country, not just wealthy campaign contributors. We are listening to workers all over this country who are telling us they cannot make it on nine or 10 bucks an hour. And actually, just before I came up here, I had the privilege of meeting with some tribal leaders here from the state of Washington. And
And I do not have to explain to anybody in this room that the way we have treated the first Americans from day one, from before this nation became a nation, has been absolutely disgraceful. Native Americans have been lied to, they have been cheated, treaties negotiated have been broken. We owe the Native American people an enormous debt of gratitude that we can never repay. We have learned, we have learned an enormous amount from their culture and perhaps more than any other people. They have taught us the need to respect our environment. They have taught us how important it is to live with nature, not destroy nature. And if elected president, we will change the relationship of the United States government to the sovereign Native American tribes. This campaign, this campaign is listening to our young people. And what our young people are saying, how does it happen that despite an explosion of technology and worker productivity, the youth generation today, if we do not change it, will be the first generation in modern history to have a lower standard of living than their parents. That's right. That is the American dream in reverse. Historically, what America has always been about is parents who did not have a lot of money, and that's my parents and millions of other families, worked hard for the dream that their kids would do better than them. And we together will not destroy that American dream. And young people are asking me, they say, Bernie, everybody told us how important it was for us to get the best education that we could. How important it was for our lives and for our country where we are competing in a very competitive global economy. How does it happen that when we do what we were asked to do, we leave school thirty, fifty thousand dollars in debt? Again, I ask you, think outside of the box, outside of status Quo. Ask yourselves why it is that millions of people in this country are being punished with outrageous debt decade after decade for what? For getting an education? That's crazy. That is not only unfair to those millions of young people who will be saddled with that. I've talked to people paying 50% of their income back in student debt, paying debt off decade after decade. We have got to do two things in my view. Number one, recognize that the people who fought for free public education 100 years ago were incredibly prescient and what they did was right. But 
The world has changed, the economy has changed, technology has changed, education has changed. Today, in many respects, a college degree is the equivalent of what a high school degree was 50 years ago. Fifty years ago, you had a high school degree, you were in pretty good shape. You can go out and get a good paying job. But that world has changed, and that is why I believe that when we talk about public education today, we must talk about tuition-free public colleges and universities. This is not a radical idea. This idea exists in Germany.